Hey there quilting friends, Carolina Moore here, your favorite sewing and quilting YouTuber. And today I am doing a video that finishes up the Dresden plate. So a while back I did a video showing you how to make a Dresden plate and I got a comment from MV who said, could you show us how to finish appliquing it on? And that's such an excellent point. Like I said, yeah, you could do this, but to see it is always a little different than telling it. So this is a video on doing appliques, specifically adding a Dresden plate applique to a quilt block. And that's what we're gonna do today. So thanks MV for the comment. This one's specifically for you, but I hope everyone else enjoys it as well. Let's get started. So what I have is I actually have the Dresden plate block that I made in the previous video. You can find that video here and see how this block or unit is made. And then I also have the center that I also made in that video. And the thing, they're separate currently and you can applique them onto a jacket or a quilt block and what we're gonna do today is a quilt block. So you can see how this gets finished and you could actually put it into a quilt or make an entire just mini quilt out of this, or you could use this block that I'm making. It's gonna be a 16 inch block. You can turn it into a medallion center for a quilt. So there's lots of ways that you can use this. The thing is you need to get these pieces onto a piece of fabric so that it becomes usable for a quilt. So our first step is going to be to take our square, and this is a 16 inch square, which means it's actually gonna finish at 15 and a half. If I wanted it to be 16 inches in a quilt, I would need to have cut it at 16 and a half. So this is cut at 16 inches, it'll finish in a quilt at 15 and a half inches, which is kind of an awkward size, but I wanted it nice and big. My Dresden is 12 inches. I may want this to be a 14 inch block in the end, but I wanted to be able to give myself some options. So I cut it at 16, 16 and a half would have given me more options. So I'm taking my fabric here and I'm folding it in half and I can use the iron or I can finger press a crease. And it's just a matter of having the crease so that I can see it. These are reference marks that we're going to use when we put the Dresden plate on there. So let me see, is finger press good enough? Mm, I'm gonna want that a little crisper. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the iron. See if the iron is warmed up enough yet. Okay, that's giving me a nice crease. Yes. So I can see that really well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do that in the other direction. Just lining up my corners, my points. And I don't wanna iron over the line that I just made going up to it because I want to be able to still see that line. There we go. So now we have reference lines in two directions that we can use when placing our Dresden plate block or our Dresden plate. It's not quite a block yet, is it? Okay, so I have this Dresden. It's been hanging out on my design wall and you can see it kind of has some, some poof to it. And so it also needs to be pressed flat again before we can continue on. So it's a little too three dimensional. I wanna make it as two dimensional as possible. Make it nice and flat. And it's probably as flat as I'm gonna be able to make that. I'm gonna set it out of the way for a second and also make sure that this circle here is made as flat as possible. Now today I'm also using my Baby Lock Aria. I grabbed this and put it here on the table. You often don't see me using this because it's on my like everyday sewing table and not here in my video filming space. But I love this machine, especially for a project like this because it has a knee lift. And the knee lift is going to let me, with my knee, lift up this presser foot, which is gonna help me go around all the points on the Dresden plate. So I'm loving that I have the Baby Lock Aria here to help me with this project. And you can find more about the Baby Lock Aria down in the description of this video. So I've moved the machine out of the way for a couple minutes to give me some space. 
while I work on this. I'm going to lay this as flat as possible, which is a little funny considering that I just put two big folds in it. And I'm gonna grab this Dresden and I'm going to lay it down. Now, depending on the Dresden that you're using and how many points it has, will determine where exactly you place. So in this case, I've got points at my, we're gonna call this north, south, east, and west. It could be top, bottom, right, and left. But I have points at all four of those. Depending on your, your Dresden, you might have like a point at the top and bottom and then a, a valley at the right and left. That's also okay. You just wanna find where your middles are on your north, south, east, and west of your Dresden and then line those up with the north, south, east, and west on your background that you folded. Now in this case, I've got points going north, south, east, and west, but I could give it a little bit of a pivot and instead do these little valleys in the north, south, east, and west, and it gives it just a teeny bit different look. Just turning it a few degrees, I feel like gives it just a teeny bit different look. I like having my points, so that's what I'm going to go with but you can use either points or valleys if you have a point valley option on yours. There we go. Now you'll see I still have this circle over on the side. I'm not doing anything with the circle yet. I'm just doing the Dresden. So now it's time to base the Dresden down. A traditional way to do, to do this might be using pins. I'm actually gonna use school glue. You've seen me use this before. And school glue is just a great way to base things down. It's super widely available. You can get it most places. Um, it's water soluble, so it'll wash right out. Uh, and it, when I set it with the iron, it'll go smoosh really flat and smooth and I don't have to worry about going through it with an iron. It's not gonna leave big chunks as long as I don't put big chunks on there. Now here on the back of my Dresden, I talked about uh, ironing this down to make it more 2D. It's never going to be completely two dimensional because there are these seams here on the back and you don't wanna take an entire piece of fusible and fuse it to the back of your Dresden and then fuse your Dresden to the background because if you do that, you'll, get, you'll end up with lumps and these seam allowances will become super visible and we don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my school glue and I'm using a really, really fine line. Sometimes the first, there we go. Sometimes the first little bit that comes out isn't as fine as you want it to be, as you kind of get used to the flow. And we're not going on the back of the fabric. I'm going on the seam allowance. So only places where I can see the front of the fabric. And I'm just doing a tiny little bit of this school glue. Gonna bring this up a little more. And this is going to base this down. Now based is a fancy word that means hold temporarily. This glue is not meant to be the final finished way that this is held down. It is temporarily going to hold it in place until we stitch this down. Okay, so I've done glue on half. I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to double check all the position that everything's where I want it and this is my last chance to really shift it. And I'm going to take my iron and just heat, this will heat set that glue which means the glue is now um, dry super quick and it smushes it a little bit and makes it nice and flat so I don't have to worry about stitching through it. There we go. So if we see, it's now secured on there. So now I'm just gonna do the same on the other side. Same thing with my glue. Just teeny little bits. It doesn't need to be solid. It doesn't need to be a solid line of glue. Just enough that it's going to tack it in place. And the nice thing about using glue versus pins is that I'm never gonna use this many pins to hold it in place, but glue gives me a more all over coverage than pins.
So I'm going to lay this down flat again, smooth everything out. The glue's not going to set immediately, so it does give me a minute or two to make any adjustments that I feel it needs. I think I'm pretty happy with that. And now I'll set it all with the iron. And I'm going to do the same thing with my circle. And you fold your center circle in half in one direction and then in half in the other. And I can line up those lines. You know, I can't see them quite as well as I want to. And I can line up these lines with lines on the Dresden to make sure that I have this centered. And I can actually take the middle of this and find the middle of my, there we go. So I also was able to find the middle of my circle and then the middle here and line those up as well. So now I have that center circle centered and I'm going to do the same thing as before. Get the glue down towards the tip of the glue bottle and I'm holding this in place with one hand so I'm not shifting the position. And if you feel like you got a little too much glue, you can always remove some with your finger. Checking the, double checking the position. Yes, that's the way I need it. Heat set that glue with an iron. It just takes a couple seconds. And now the one side's being held and I can go ahead and do the other side. So I can turn off my iron. My Dresden is completely basted in place. And I can set up my sewing machine so that we can stitch all this down on the sewing machine. Now I have my sewing machine threaded on the top with monofilament thread. Some people compare monofilament thread to like fishing line. That's a polyester thread. It is super, super fine. And it does have a little bit of shine to it. So depending on the project that you're doing, you may want to look at different monofilament threads. A clear monofilament might not be the best choice. There are dark monofilaments as well. So if you have, like if this was a navy or black, I might wanna use a dark monofilament so that it wouldn't show. I have my stitch length and width set to a 1.5 and 1.4. So it's a really, really small zigzag that I'm doing right here on the edge because I'm just gonna zigzag and catch the very edge of my Dresden as I sew all the way around and then I'm going to do the same with the circle in the middle. And then on the bottom I just have regular white because my background fabric is white so whatever your background fabric is just in case anything pulls you won't see it. I don't usually have any problems with this baby lock aria having any of the thread from the back the bobbin show up on the front so I probably could have used the orange that I had in here before but I'm gonna go with there we go, the uh, a white. So I put this underneath my needle here and I'm gonna go ahead and do a teeny tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny zigzag stitch. All the way down. And now with the knee lift, I can pivot this with two hands, put the presser foot down
and that's all I'm doing. Just a teeny tiny zigzag. Looks like I hit a little snag of glue there, or I need to have a new needle. There we go. And you can see with all the points on here, it is so nice to have the knee lift. I'm trying to hit the thread so that it goes outside the Dresden and then inside and outside and inside. But if the outside stitch just hits, hits the edge of the Dresden, I'm okay with that too. And you want to keep your project as flat as possible so that a corner doesn't get tucked up underneath because it's always so crazy making for me when that happens. Keep doing this all the way around. So there we go, I've gone all the way around this edge and now I'm just gonna do the same thing around my little tiger in the circle. Once you've sewn everything on, and you can actually do this before stitching down the center, which might have been a good idea, but you can actually remove this background fabric. This becomes scrap that you can put in your um, scrap bin and it reduces the bulk and layers. So if you wanna start by just pinching and grabbing just the background, make sure that you are not grabbing your Dresden cause you really don't wanna cut into that. And then using small sharp thread snips. Here we go. This first part's the scariest because you can't quite see what you're doing. But give yourself a quarter inch seam allowance as you go around and snip just this background. Now we have basted this pretty well, but that basting, it's water soluble glue. So it's not a big deal to just grab your background from the Dresden and just pull them apart. They actually pull apart pretty easily. So we're gonna go around and we can remove, there we go. Now I have a little bit of an opening. I can just reach in here and start to separate everything that's been basted. There we go. And now it's pretty easy to go ahead and just clip this out and remove it. This is really, it's gonna depend what you're using this for you want to again be careful we don't want to cut our um dresden itself but 
This will help if you are going to quilt this down. It'll keep the dimension in your quilting and it just removes all that extra bulk. And then to cut the center, I'm just gonna open this up. And here you don't need to worry about seam allowance because the background is connected to that center. And we could have completely clipped this out before I stitched down that center, but I wasn't thinking of it. So it's not a big deal to have this center have a little extra background in it. I'll take the threads from the top, that monofilament, and I'll pull them to the back. And that way they will end up in the quilt. So if this ends up in a quilt, then those threads will end up in the back of the quilt. You can tie them off if you want to the back of the quilt so that they stay there and they don't pull up. Monofilament, similar to fishing line, like it can kind of get unsprung and get all over the place. So a little bit trickier to work with, but it gets such a beautiful result. If you don't have monofilament or you really don't want to use monofilament, then um, I mean, you could look at something like bottom line. Bottom line would give you a pretty close similar result, especially if you can match the bottom line to the project that you're doing. So that would be another option and it doesn't spring quite as much as the fibers in monofilament do. And another option if you can uh, just match your color thread. So a fine thread that you can match to the edge. Um, there's some great 100 weight threads out there that would be able to do this as well. And you can match those to the color of your project and they're pretty invisible. Or a totally different option is to stitch right on the edge like with a big sashiko stitch on a sashiko machine and that way your applique is actually a really visible applique people can see how and where it's attached um, but it, it adds a style to it so there's lots of different ways once you understand the basics of how to put it all together and baste it down the stitching becomes important because you want it to last but you can add some style to it if you want there you go. That is adding your Dresden to a background. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below and make sure you're subscribed. So much more fun here to share with you. And I wanna make sure you're subscribed so that you know all the new videos. Plus, if you haven't been around, there are lots of videos that I have posted recently, as well as some videos from the past. So you may wanna look around and see if I have other videos that pique your quilty interest. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching my friends. I will see you right here real soon. Bye for now.